Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I wanna share a secret with you that really shouldn't be a secret, and that is how to drive J-Gate. And J-Gate is this particular, um, very elegant design of transmission gear selector system, which is uh, kind of a, a Jaguar hallmark up until maybe the XF when we started to see the rotary selectors come in. But those rotary selectors were then supplemented by sh your paddle shifters on the steering wheel. So that was basically the paddle shifters um, moving over from the J-gate. So the J-gate should do what your paddle shifters does. However, from my experience of talking to owners, um, whenever I meet them at shows, etc., plus the comments that we get on the YouTube channel and a lot of the emails I get, and this is very fuzzy logic, but I estimate that nearly 60% of XK8 owners don't actually use the left-hand side of their J-gate, and it's just something a bit of a novelty, really and they don't recognize yet how useful that is and as we say, how to drive J-Gate. That's not a criticism because a lot of these cars are bought for their cruising ability and end of day, if you can do that and you go forward, do that and you go backward and everything is done for you beautifully, smoothly, powerfully. Yeah. You don't need any more. Needing one to two different things. So I just want to take a little bit of time today to go through J-Gate and how you drive a car with J-Gate. I'd just like to start this segment by saying that this video is not intended to be in any way disrespectful to those who don't use J-Gate in the way I'm going to describe and don't want to and have no need to. If your uh, car is solely used for comfy cruising at moderate speeds, uh, you don't live in a hilly area, etc, etc, then um, yeah, use D. D is fantastic and our car's uh, gearbox combined with the transmission computer combined with the programs is going to give you a fantastic experience but for those who are interested in it this is what we're going to explore next thing is to say that everything we're chatting about with jgate only really applies to x100s so if you have an x150 then um, you've got a half jgate at best and paddle shifters, which are great, but different. Or you've got a five liter XK, the later cars, um, with X150. You've got a rotary shift like an XF and paddle shifts. And again, this doesn't really apply so much to you. However, X308s and the XJ40, XJ8, etc., all that sort of era of XJs, this is the same system. So I'm pretty sure almost everybody watching this is going to be very familiar with the right hand side of the J-Gate. So uh, I'm just sharing a few ideas just for completeness. Please don't think I'm trying to teach you to suck eggs. So P is the starting position. It stands for park. The car can be started with the gear stick in this position. If you try and pull the gear stick out of this position, without the engine running, without your foot on the brake, it does not come out because it's mechanically locked. So let's start her up. And now, still won't come out apart until I put my foot on the brake. And then we can move to the next position. Park does not replace your handbrake. Park will stop the car rolling away. But if you leave the car on a hill in park, then what happens is you put a strain on the gearbox. And it's very difficult to pull out of park sometimes because it's leaning on the mechanical pulls inside the gearbox. So we should always engage our handbrake 
and park before releasing the foot brake. Next position is reverse. As soon as it's in reverse, I've got my foot on the brake at the moment. If I release the brake, we would start to move. And reverse is a taller gear than first gear. You can go quite quickly in reverse, but the throttle opening on the car is limited in reverse in order to make sure that we don't race away too quickly. And the torque converter is applying maximum slippage in reverse to make it a smoother action. Neutral. This is the other gear you could start the car in. Um, so, for instance, for random reasons, the car is stalled whilst we're running. You could push this forward into neutral and try the key to restart it. It will only start in park and neutral. In neutral, it doesn't matter what we do with the throttle. I've got my brakes off. The engine will rev, we will go nowhere. The engine will only rev to four and a half thousand RPM and it is automatically rev, rev limited in neutral to that point. Pull it back to drive and depending on how we're driving and the uh, circumstances um, being relayed by various sensors around the vehicle, <clears throat> the car is running programs and will select the right gear. My car is a five speed uh, gearbox. Uh, it will select the right one of its five gears for the circumstances that it sees and select the points at which it changes gear based on torque, effort, revs, etc, etc. In D, if we use the S button, we increase the point at which the car believes it needs to change up and start some other programs and then if we're driving vigorously more programs come in. D will do 99% of everything you ever want to do and if you're not interested in spirited driving or saving your brakes that's absolutely fine. Then we have the other side of the J gate. First of all you'll note on mine it says two three four that's because I have a five speed gearbox and in this scenario, fifth gear is only engaged when I'm in D. If you have a six speed car, six speed is only engaged when you're in D. Over on the left hand side are basically, you can imagine them as manually selectable gears. Not quite true, but it's a good starting point. If I have the gear stick in four, then what that means is the car is capable of selecting first, second, third or fourth, depending on driving conditions, but it will not select fifth. Fourth is the highest it will go. And you can over rev the car. Because we're not in neutral, the rev limit is now 6,800 RPM. If I select, then the car is capable of selecting first, second, third, but not fourth and fifth. And will hold third, even if we're revving hard. Second, the car is capable of selecting first and second, but not capable on its own of selecting third, fourth and fifth. You can over rev the engine. You'll note you can't manually select first. This is because it is so easy to over rev the engine and to put it under a lot of strain on overrun. That's when you're going down a steep hill and you back off the throttle. So the engine and the transmission decide when first is appropriate. You don't get that option. So that's okay, enough of the classroom styly lecture. Let's do something more fun. 
more noisy and more outdoors. The gestures you're about to see are not intended to be rude. They are in fact me trying to leave myself clues to synchronise two totally different cameras and sound recordings. So here we see a dapper young gentleman in a particularly nice TTG hat, I might say, um, going for a country drive and completely within the speed limit, enjoying his vehicle. The car is not in sport, you saw me turn it off, and that is actually just to emphasise a point that's otherwise hard to go across. So as I approach these twisties, um, I go into them on a slack throttle and I might want to exit that bend reasonably quickly. In doing so, I need it to be in a lower gear. Now the D setting does do that for us, but pay attention to the sounds and what you see is, because I'm approaching a bend, I ease off the throttle. In easing off the throttle, the engine thinks easy, change up and puts it in a higher gear and therefore basically coasting. And then only when you exit does it detect you hitting the throttle and think, oh he wants to accelerate. Um, and if it's accelerating hard enough, I'll change down. So the down change is late, and I've just changed up, and I didn't need to do that. So because the gearbox and the car can't see what you can see, you can't see the exit of the bend, and because the gearbox doesn't know what you're thinking, it changes up at a point where in a manual you would be changing down and it's never ready for the bend and the exit. Now let's watch it being driven in, in JK. By using the left hand side of the J-gate, I can pre-select a lower gear on the way into the bend. That gives me some engine braking, but it also means when I touch the throttle, it instantly accelerates. It doesn't change down twice because in the previous condition it will have changed up just before the bend. And then there's that delay while it makes the two changes before the acceleration and the car is an entirely different animal when driven in this way even sport mode doesn't do the same thing you don't get the pre-selection of the right gear and the instantaneous acceleration because the instantaneous acceleration is interrupted by making two shifts before it's ready and in the right gear. So manual or the left hand side of JK, it's not truly manual, gives us that flexibility and that excitement. It changes the character of the car entirely. Try it out, see how you get on.
So that's what this all does. Why do we want that? <clears throat> if I'm driving in a spirited fashion, i.e. enjoying myself, and I'm going around the twisties, the car will select the best gear for the circumstances. And it does that through clever stuff, like looking at the wheel speed sensors, looking at the torque, looking at the way you're driving, looking at whether you've got sport turned on and off, uh, all sorts of great things. And it makes excellent decisions. It can sense almost everything. However, what it can't sense is what you can see and what you're thinking. So in D, imagine I go into a bend and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch out of this bend the car cannot know that. It sees you decelerating. It sees it's making no effort at the moment. So it's going to keep changing up the gears to as high a gear as it can to save fuel and to save effort. So it will probably be in 4th or 5th when you enter this tight bend. As you go round the bend, you hit the gas and even though you're going quite slowly, um, you want to launch out that bend. The car is in fifth. It has to sense, oh, the, pretel, the throttle pedal has been depressed quite vigorously. It has to sense that it is at a particular rev and what gear it can go into. It has to change the gear. And that all adds in quite a lot of delay before the car possibly goes from fifth on entry to the bend to second because you floored the throttle. Or because we're humans, what we're able to do is go, I'm going into this bend, I'm hitting the brakes, I'm going to want second on the way out. And the car will change into second the revs will rise because you're decelerating and as you hit the point where you want to accelerate you touch the gas and you go and it's instantaneous if you've got a normally aspirated four liter v8 that's all about torque and responsiveness d masks that torque and responsiveness massively 
if you enter a bend, slam it into two, and then floor it on the way out, you will find you've got an entirely different car. You will feel the rear end squirm a little bit, even with the traction control on. You will feel that instantaneous torque and acceleration, uncushioned by the programs that are running in D. This is the extra sensor um, of us. We can see what the road ahead is going to do. We know what we want to do. So tell the car before you get there. Some people have a fear of throwing the gear shift over to the left on the grounds that maybe it can over rev. And it is true that it can scream the revs. But the important one is, let's say I decide to go um, into a sharp bend and first time through it, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick it in third. That's great. And I'm doing 50 miles an hour, wherever as I'm entering this bend. And it's all fabulous. The next time I try it, I think, I know, I'm going to try slamming it into second at 50 miles an hour. Now, don't read too much into these figures. If I do that, and the car has worked out that, hello, if I actually select second, given the road speed I'm doing, the revs will go over the red line, the car will stay in third until it's appropriate to go into second. It's only this one that's protected. So make your decisions. If you do that, you're not going to uh, knock the revs up to 10,000 RPM because if they were going there, the car would not allow you to select second. So what you can actually do is drive the car manually. You can accelerate using this as well, and the car is slightly quicker if you hit the gears at exactly the right moment. You launch in two and the car will select first if you're in sport mode. It will go first and then change to second and it will hold second until you decide to change. You change into third, it will hold third until you decide to change. You go fourth, the same, and you select fifth by going over to D. And the move from left to right is sprung. All you need to do is basically just tap the gear stick and over she goes. The move back, you've got to be sure. And again, is just to stop people accidentally selecting the left-hand side of the J-gate. Another reason that you would want these manual gears is to give you engine braking. Automatic gearboxes are set up to basically use the highest gear that they can at any given time as a default. Saves fuel, saves effort, saves noise, all the rest of it. So when you're going downhill, they tend to think, ooh, this is easy, and change up and up and up. And in doing so, you coast faster and faster and faster downhill. And that's a trait of many um, automatic gearboxes. Some of the most sophisticated modern ones will detect inclination and whether you've touched the brakes and make all sorts of adjustments, but not for old cars like ours. So if I'm approaching a steep downhill, I can see I'm going to be going downhill for some while. I may be in um, a queue of cars going down there. I don't want the car to just get faster and faster and faster. I don't want to ride for half a mile with my brakes on, they're going to burn out. I'm wasting my brake pads. I'm heating everything up. I'm glazing my brakes and potentially damaging them. What would I be doing in a manual car? I would change down the gearbox and let some engine braking um, take the strain. So in the XK8, what you do is you see a long steep hill on a country road Think, well, I'm not in a rush, I'm get down there a bit slow. I've no idea how tight the corner is at the bottom. You'd probably stick it in third gear. 
and take your foot off the throttle and the engine will slow you as you're going down that hill. It becomes really steep. Let's say you're going down one of our classic passes like Porlock Hill, for instance, um, which is about a 25% gradient. Um, I don't care how brave you are or em how empty you think the road is. You should be sticking it there and that will give you quite a lot of engine braking, which you're going to be supplementing with a foot brake, but you won't ride the entire mile and a half down the hill with the car with the brakes on full because the engine will slow you as well. A lot of older um, cars will have P, R, N, D, and then three, four, two, three, whatever, or low. Um, but they didn't have this elegant setup, which kind of separates the, this is the automatic side, this is the manual side. They didn't have programs running behind it, it was just the cable linkage. Um, and they are not nice systems in terms of the tactileness of them to use. This genuinely feels great. When you get a hang of a J-gate and you start driving it manually, it is an absolute joy to use. The feel of it is magnificent. It's smooth, it's got that beautiful detent, the way it springs from one system to another, it, it just feels great. Very tactile, very beautiful, and um, not really well replicated by anybody else. These days, Jaguars tend to have a rotary dial to select the various standard programs and use flappy paddles to make these selections. And what that, what that has done is given us technically a better system in terms of fast changes, manually, but your average Joe will never use those things, and certainly not for things like the hill descents, etc. They're just something that we decide, oh, I'm over 50, I don't use those. <laughs> or whatever, I'm, I'm being flippant. This, I think, is a huge loss. Uh, be really interested to see your comments below, whether you're a fan of the J-Gate, um, the Rotary, selector which is the xf system or we've gone away from that entirely you like the flappy paddles if you're an x150 fan then maybe flappy paddles are your thing well i hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as i've enjoyed making it it's a tactile thing it's an audio thing so it's hard to describe And it feels right to round off with a nod to the late great Jim Randall, who died in 2019, who was Director of Engineering at Jaguar, and after whom the nickname of our gear stick is the Randall Handle. He's the guy who's attributed to uh, developing that, and he also looked after the XJ220, the XJ40. What a great man. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Please click the bell icon and allow notifications so we can let you know when new things are coming up. And consider going over onto the website, checking out all the good stuff we've got on there. If you want to support the channel, then you can do so by buying a sticker or a hat. There's never going to be charged any time for any of the videos. I'll leave you with a few more seconds of basically me enjoying myself out in the lanes. Hope it inspires you to go play with your J-Gates. And just a note that 
my engine note isn't really as harsh as it sounds in these images. It's a microphone mounted on a camera, mounted on the boot lid, in the wind. But um, see you soon, guys.